Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at the real minimum requirement to play Arc Raider. I mean, we're going to try to be at 1080p at low settings and reach 30 FPS or more. Quick reminder, the proposed minimum requirement was the i5-6600K, but we were bottlenecked by the CPU, the Ryzen 5 1600, which seems to be okay, 12GB of RAM, but we used 16 and we saw that we often over 8GB of RAM, so that was uh, settled. The GTX 1050 Ti was uh, plenty enough, and the RX 580 was plenty enough also, and the RK 380 I've tested in the ARC GPU video. Welcome to Respond PC, I'm Dunk, let's game on. Our first test will be a viewer setup from Senko. I use the i5-8600 GTX 1070 Ti and 16GB of RAM. And my FPS is 30 to 40 with the CPU at 100%. This is something that I already want to test to begin with. So here is his video at the same time with the i5-8600K which is way higher than the i5-6600K, but with a better GPU, the GTX 1070 Ti. It will be perfect for the testing, so we're sure that we're not bottlenecked by the GPU, and I want to see that CPU bottleneck that we're having to pinpoint where I should head for the CPU. So the testing was at 1080p, medium settings, presets with TAAU at 100%. The only manual option removed is motion blur. Senkori said he was playing at 1080p, low settings, but no upscaling. I'm telling you, you can use upscaling TAAU at medium settings and you'll get an average of 75 FPS. It's playable, but as expected, I also have my CPU peg at 100%, sometimes going as low as 90 to 80 percentage of its position but we are bottlenecked by the CPU. The stutter is up here, here and there. CPU, GPU wise, we are hovering between 80 to 70 percentage of its position at 4.4 GB of VRAM. For the RAM itself, we are at 13 GB of RAM out of 16, but with the CPU peg at 100%, it's called for stutter or crash. Since I had the 8th gen platform on my bench, I take out the i7-8700. So now we have 6 core 12 thread instead of 6 core 6 thread. But we are running at 3.2 GHz instead of 3.6. I want to see if the CPU bottleneck is on the core thread or the core frequency. If it's on frequency, then the i7 will give us a worse performance than the i5 because the frequency is lower. And if it's on core slash thread, the i7 will give us a better performance because it's using more core slash thread. I put it back the GTX 1050 Ti, which is the proposed recommended GPU. Until we find the lowest CPU we can go, this will stay in there. With 16GB of RAM, we're playing at 1080p, low settings, and no upscaling. We finally have the GPU peg at 99%, uh, using 3.1GB of VRAM out of 4. And the CPU, look at that, we are in the mid-50s to 60s. So it seems this game love core slash thread and not a core frequency. I got an average of 58 FPS with that getup. And since we're aiming for the real minimum requirement, we should be able to find something that brings us to 30 FPS. But how old can we go? Next, I decide to drop to the 5th gen of Intel. This is the i7-5820K with 16GB of RAM and still the GTX 1050 Ti and still at 1080p, low preset settings, no upscaling. Also a 6 core 12 thread CPU, but at 3.3 GHz instead of 3.2, but with a lower boost speed at 3.6 instead of 4.6. Here the CPU is not bottleneck, but I get a little bit lower performance than the i7-8700. Probably some core here and there sometimes reach the 100%. I get an average of 54 FPS. So we lost 4 FPS. GPU is still pegged at 99, but sometimes dropping in the high 90s, like 98, 96 percentage of its position. So probably some core are pegged at 100% right now. But the CPU is in the mid 60s, sometimes 70. So it's, it's still playable at 54 FPS for a whole system like this. Dropping in generation, we now to the fourth gen, the i7-4771. This is now a 4 core 8 thread. This is the interesting part, as now we have a CPU bottleneck. Seems that 6 core is not enough, you need 6 core 12 threads, but 4 core 8 threads, which is more than 6 core in total, if you count all the thread, is not enough. So you need at least 6 core and threads. Just 6 core is not good enough also. The GPU is not peg, we are hovering between 75 to 90 percentage of its position. CPU is at 96 to 100 percent. We still managed to get an average of 52 FPS, but it's a lot 
of stutter. Micro stutter, but stutter still. And sometimes you get a good stutter. I mean a heavy stutter. So I guess we found our real minimum CPU it would be the i7-5820K. Because lower than that, we are CPU bottleneck. Even the i7-5820K is borderline limit. So I went back up to the i7-5820K and I dropped the GPU because we now need to find the GPU. So this is the GTX 964GB variant at 1080p, low settings, no upscaling. The GPU is almost peg at 1%, what, 98, 97, using 3.4 gigabyte of VRAM out of 4. CPU-wise, we are in the high 60s to the mid 70s. We're not exactly peg at 1%, but we may have a core or a thread peg at 100%. We are using 11.7 GB of RAM and the gameplay is uh, quite smooth. At 45 FPS, uh, it's uh, playable, at least for this kind of game. Now dropping lower in terms of GPU, I forgot to mention that with the GTX 960, but you get a warning that the GPU is not support and that the game may be crash or flicker or jump over a bridge. But now we're using the GTX 950. This is a 2GB VRAM card at 1080p low settings and no upscaling. I got an average of 40 FPS. That seems playable, right? But um, not really. The game is uh, super stuttery. Yes, the GPU is mostly pegged at 99% uh, using the entire 2GB of VRAM, obviously. But it's not exactly what I would call a playable experience. Oh, and then you know that uh, if you kill that uh, things with your tool, you get an achievement. I didn't know. I just forgot to bring a weapon. In terms of CPU, we seem we still have a core or a thread that is pegged at 100%, giving us uh, some kind of CPU bottleneck, I would say. RAM, we're using 13.3 gigabyte of RAM out of 16 and for the frame time frame graph uh, like I said it was uh, quite a bit stuttery. I will not recommend at all the 950 or lower. I don't know if it's the power of the GPU or it's just uh, the lack of a uh, VRAM. So I would say the GTX 960 4GB uh, VRAM is the winner as the real minimum. I have also tried FSR3, TAAU and XCSS to see I can get a bit more frame or more stable frame rate and the quick answer to that is no. Actually, all three upscaling that you can use make your FPS even worse. Drop in the 30s and sometimes in the high 20s. I'm not sure why. Probably it's using more CPU power which is already at the maximum it can be used right now or the few headroom that it has. It's dropping the performance of uh, the game but the 950 with any kind of upscaling the results become worse and by the way did you know there's also an achievement if you slide on your pants for at least 80 meters now we have intel uh, cpu uh, settle Nvidia GPU settle, let's jump to the AMD side of things. First off, it will be the Ryzen 5 1500 instead of the Ryzen 5 1600. So now we're at the 4 core 8 thread. So we'll be able to test the theory of the 4 core 8 thread versus 6 core 12 thread. Pair with the RX 564 GB variant at 1080p low settings. I've tried with FSR since this is AMD card at AA and no upscaling at all, giving me a difference of about 5 FPS between both, giving 39 no upscaling and 44 with upscaling. But we do have a CPU bottleneck, being in the 90s and sometimes peg at 100% and the GPU sometimes hovering in the high 80s percentage of utilization. So 4 core 8 thread seems to be an issue. You need at least 6 core 12 threads. Just 6 core 4 core 8 thread or whatever number, it's 6 core 12 thread or more, otherwise your CPU is going to bottleneck. The RX 560 4 GB variant seems quite enough to play the game. I did get the warning that the card is uh, lower than the spec for the minimum requirement, but can play the game really well. I've tested with the Ryzen 5 1600, which is the proposed minimum requirement CPU, where I didn't get a CPU bottleneck and the card was playing well. Similar FPS, but no more stutter. And just to try it out, uh, I kept the same system, but I used the R9 380 4GB variant. This is quite a really old uh, GPU, no more supported, no more driver. And we do get the driver warning that the, the card is uh, literally expired, I guess. But it lets you continue and it loads the game. So you can actually play with the expired uh, driver and an expired uh, GPU. 
And it seems as long as you have 4 gigabyte of VRAM, you should be able to play. We have 1080p, low settings, no upscaling, and we're having a 48 FPS average. The GPU is almost peg at 100%. We are at 98 to 96 percentage of utilization, but we're still on the CPU bottleneck with that CPU. If you change to the Ryzen 5 1600, or if this is what you have, you get a 50 FPS average. You gain 2 FPS, and this is without upscaling. I didn't play long enough, maybe Maybe the GPU will make the game crash on the long term, but for the testing I've done, the GPU went uh, quite well. So what is our winner? What is our real minimum requirement to play Arc Raiders? It seems to be you need a 6 core 12 threads regardless of the brand. So for Intel would be the i7-5820K that I've tested. For AMD it would be the Ryzen 5 1600, which is exactly what the dev spec for the minimum requirement for this game. On the GPU side, even though we get a warning with the GTX 960 4GB variant, the game is highly playable. For the AMD side, you can go as old as R9380 4GB and the game will still be playable, even though you get a warning for driver being expired. The trigger of playability seems to be 4GB of VRAM. For the RAM itself, 12 is a bit limit since we passed over 12 a couple of times, so 16 should be the minimum requirement. For the Intel GPU, just watch my Intel Arc GPU in Arc Raiders. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, and subscribe.